Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we are taking a closer look at the Baryonyx. The Baryonyx lived about 130 to 125 million years ago during the early Cretaceous period. It was first discovered by an amateur fossil hunter named William Walker, who found a large claw sticking out of the ground in a quarry in Surrey, England in 1983. Along with the claw, an almost complete skeleton was uncovered. This discovery is one of the most complete theropod skeletons found in the UK. Walker had discovered a previously unknown type of theropod and it was given the name Baryonyx, meaning heavy claw, in honour of the claw that Walker had seen. This claw would be positioned on the first finger of its three-fingered hand and was very large, measuring about 31 centimetres, that's about 12 inches, along its curve. This would have been even longer in life as it would be covered in a sheath of keratin. When it was first discovered, it was not known if the claw was positioned on the hand or if it was similar to the sickle killing claw found on the foot of raptors. Baryonyx was around 9 metres long and weighed between 1.2 and 1.7 tonnes. But this estimate is based on the holotype specimen found by Walker, which may not have been fully grown. Elements of the skull and vertebral column of this specimen appear not to have fused. This suggests the individual was not fully grown. However, the specimen does have a fused sternum, which indicates it was fairly mature. Another well-preserved specimen was found to be about the same size, and scientific tests have shown the holotype specimen to have been between 23 and 25 years old. Another distinguishing feature of the Baryonyx is its long, crocodile-like skull which was unlike any other theropod dinosaur skull known. Today, Baryonyx is referred to as a Spinosaurid dinosaur, the group named after the later and much larger Spinosaurus. An interesting association between these two dinosaurs is that while Spinosaurus was discovered and named much earlier than Baryonyx in 1912, its skull was not known until the 1990s. Until this point, a Spinosaurus skull was recreated to look just like any other carnosaur theropod. It was first suggested in 1986 that the elongated snout of the Baryonyx, with many finely serrated teeth, indicated that it was Pisivorus, meaning that it ate fish. This was confirmed when fish remains were found in the stomach region of the holotype specimen. The Baryonyx was the first theropod dinosaur demonstrated to being a fish eater. Some scientists doubt whether the Baryonyx could have survived on a diet of fish alone. No large animal today eats only fish. It is therefore likely that Baryonyx supplemented its diet with land-dwelling prey, whether by hunting or scavenging. Indeed, the same specimen in which the fish remains were found also contained the bones of a juvenile iguanodon. It is imagined that Baryonyx would have used its large claws to spear fish and snatch them out of the water, similar to the way a modern grizzly bear hunts salmon. But also it was noticed that the snout of the Baryonyx was very similar to the gharial crocodile, and had extensive pits which would have been exits for blood vessels and nerves. It could have been able to detect the movement of fish by dipping its sensitive snout in the water. It may have fed like a heron or stork, wading in shallow water and snatching up fish with its long jaws. Baryonyx had a notch at the end of its jaws created by a curved recess in the premaxilla and a rounded protuberance in the lower jaw that roughly matches the curvature of the above recess. This feature is commonly seen in crocodiles and helps to increase grip on struggling and slippery prey like fish. The teeth are also thin and long and are best suited for gripping and holding prey rather than shearing and crunching. The large claws of Baryonyx were probably used for gripping and tearing at prey that was already caught, essentially doing the job of shearing prey's flesh in the absence of specialised teeth for the purpose. Further indication of its semi-aquatic lifestyle and fish-eating diet can be seen from the environment where it lived. Most fossils of Baryonyx have been found in southern England and Spain. During the Cretaceous, this area had a subtropical climate, and the area was a fluvial or mudflat environment with shallow water, lagoons and marsh. This area had a huge body of water called Wilden Lake. Back in the Cretaceous, this lake submerged a good portion of Western Europe, 
including most of France and parts of southern England. Rivers running into it formed an expanse of river deltas that would have been the ideal habitat for spinosaurid carnivores like Baryonyx. Well that's all for today and thank you so much for watching. As always I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. Please leave me some comments down below and hit the like button if you did enjoy it. There are links to my Twitter, Facebook and Patreon in the description. And please subscribe if you haven't already and I hope to see you here next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.